What does it mean to fund a revocable trust and why is it necessary? So step one in creating your trust is actually getting the document drafted by an attorney, going over your specific plans and making sure the attorney puts whatever your specific wishes are in the trust document. The trust itself is the document that states what you want to have happen to your assets while you're alive, after you pass away. It's gonna give rules for the manager of your trust, the trustee, which is often you while you're alive, and then obviously somebody else when you pass away. And it sets up all kinds of other useful information that revolve around how to utilize your trust and what needs to be done in order to uh, make sure that your wishes get carried out. Now that's step one. Step two is often referred to as funding the trust. And that is the process where you actually need to retitle assets that you own into the trust, or if you're purchasing new assets, buying them under the name of the trust now rather than you as an individual, or sometimes depending on the specific asset, you might actually list the trust as a beneficiary or a payable on death recipient for that particular asset. Now, why is it necessary? Well, if you don't do that, you basically have a very expensive piece of paper and nothing else. So unfortunately, I see this in my practice far too often when somebody hires an attorney to establish a trust for them, a revocable trust, we call it revocable because you can make changes to it during your lifetime. And what they receive is a document that lists them as the creator of the trust, it lists their trustees, it lists what they want to have happen to their assets, it lists what the duties and the obligations of the trustee are, it lists everything else that needs to be included in the document to make it a legally binding document. However, that step two is not done, meaning they don't actually make sure that the house that they own is either retitled into the trust, or if you're here in Florida, you can utilize a ladybird deed, essentially making the trust a beneficiary. They don't retitle bank accounts into the trust or money markets or investment accounts. They don't put the trustee as a beneficiary, maybe on a primary checking account. If you own a business, you have to make sure that the business interest uh, can get assigned to the trust. So if things like this aren't done, your trust essentially has no control over those documents. They don't fall under the trust. If the trust doesn't control them, if the trust isn't the new owner of what you have, then nothing that you own is actually governed by that trust and it will go through probate. It does not avoid probate. And no, simply putting these assets on a Schedule A or listing them out and doing nothing else also does not include them in your trust. What includes the documents, or sorry, what includes the assets in your trust is the actual process of retitling them into the name of the trust. So these require specific documents. Sometimes it's a deed, sometimes it's, it's an assignment. Um, sometimes you know it might be a beneficiary designation, a POD designation, or it might be a letter that has to go to your financial advisor or a financial institution requesting to rename an account under your trust. So this is a very vital action that has to be done. If you don't do this, your assets, again, are not gonna be governed by your trust. They are gonna to have to go through the probate process. So is it necessary? Yes, it's vitally necessary. Um, if you don't do it, it's just a waste of money to have the trust because it's, again, nothing more than paper. So I hope this answers your question. If you have any other questions about trust or estate planning, asset protection, or elder law like Medicaid, please contact our office if you're in Florida. We're in Clearwater and the link is in my bio.